Get ready to dive into a world where empires stand on the brink of war and terrible monsters tear at the fragile borderlands of men. The Adventurer Conqueror King System Imperial Imprint, or as we like to call it, Axe 2, is now live on Kickstarter. Axe 2 is the new edition of the acclaimed best-selling fantasy role-playing game. You'll find everything you need to enjoy epic fantasy campaigns with a sweeping scope. Whether you want to crawl through dungeons, experiment with alchemy, crossbreed monsters, run a merchant emporium, raise an undead legion, or even conquer an empire, Axe 2 supports your playstyle. Axe 2 integrates experience point mechanics, making campaign activities a seamless part of the core gameplay loop. Your character levels up in new and exciting ways each time you play, adding massive replayability to each of your adventures. Axe 2 offers 18 character classes, 378 spells, new combat mechanics, and so much more. Support Axe 2 on Kickstarter today. Hello, and welcome to Knocked Prone, a podcast of high crits, small fits, and varying wits. My name is Cade, and I'm the host and dungeon master for this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition adventure, and I am joined here by the players to my left. Mason, playing Look Here. Brooklyn, playing Litzy. Danny, playing Test. Caden, playing Blink. As last we left our adventurers, they found the Knoll Lair, where the where the young rangers were stationed and found the rangers to be doing some sort of ritual, and it seemed almost willingly. The party, uh, Blink in particular, changed into a knoll and walked up to one of the other knolls and having a cool sorcery uh Meta magic, meta magic, no, wild, wild. wild magic, uh, effect going dealt two hundred damage in one single flick to a knoll, and they took him back as somewhat of a leader, <laughs> with his cool little leader necklace on that he had picked up, and uh, Litzy also changed into a knoll and walked up while Lakir and Tess both stayed behind. And now they're kind of, uh, and now the gnolls are leading both the rangers and Litzy and Blink back to their camp with Blink kind of taking charge. And that's where we left off. So let's get started. So what my character is trying to do, and I think look here with me, but you can clarify if something else, but, but yeah, so we were trying to slip in before all of them got back in and get back on like the wall with the peeps or maybe a different hiding location if i see any maybe i give it a roll yeah roll me a per- uh, perception it's gonna be a fat nat 20 oh no way yes you find the perfect little nook inside of the wall that has a hot cocoa station <laughs> a massage table in the back yeah so you and you and Lakir are able to um, you don't even have to roll a stealth check the masseuse checks you in puts a hot <laughs> towel on your back oh, no. It's, it's a whole event. Awesome. <laughs> um, as we go in, I'm going to snap at the ground. Um, Phoenix will appear, and I'm going to have Phoenix um, try to stealthily like go make his way in with the crowd. Um, and I'll basically, I'll tell you, I'll say, tap me if you need anything. And my eyes will kind of haze over, and I'll look through Phoenix's eyes. I will. Can I recognize which one is Litzy? Yes, Litzy is the the knoll that doesn't have her mouth sewn shut, and she is slightly smaller than all the other knolls, considering she is twelve. Fair. Okay. And also a halfling. A gnome. A gnome. Thank you. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I've been mixing those up all week. All so yeah, I'll have it kind of go up to. I'll have Phoenix go up to Litzy and just kind of, like, be close to her, um, and I'll look through its eyes. Yeah, so uh, Phoenix approaches you and gives a little as it comes to your side, Litzy, 
and you recognize it to be Phoenix. All right. All right. Uh, Blink, what are, what are you doing? So, <laughs> uh, last thing I did was absolutely slaughter that gnoll. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't, I, my goal right now is just to try to get these uh, kids away from wherever they were leading them. Because I feel like if they stick around there, they're either going to get sacrificed, they're going to get turned into gnolls themselves. It's like nothing good can come of it. So I'm kind of trying to just lead them away from that area. Um, uh, I think as of right now, the gnolls are just kind of rolling with it, partially out of fear of uh, getting blasted. Getting flicked. Yeah, getting <laughs> flicked. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so I guess, um, um, uh, I mean, and I also have my, or, or my, my, uh, disguised self spell makes it look like I, my mouth is sewn shut, so, you know, that would be, like, why I can't speak Noel back to them, uh, so, um, I'm gonna continue trying to lead these kids back to, um, or at least, uh, back on the road away from where they were where all the crazy stuff was going on. Because if I remember right, there was like a fountain. Yeah, right? so there's a there was a fountain filled with the purple ooze that you guys had seen coming out of the rabbits. Um, and it was, there was like a, a dirt road that leads right back to the Knoll camp. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to lead these kids about half the distance between the fountain and the, and the, uh, the fort. Was that what it was? Or what yeah, it was a, a fort. A, a fort. Um, and uh, uh, I'm just gonna park him right there. Um, before I leave, before I lead them to that section of the road, um, I'm going to uh, motion to the rest of the gnolls, uh, kind of just holding my both of my hands out and just kind of going, hmm, you know, like like telling them to stay uh, so that they don't follow me. Roll me a persuasion check okay, okay, okay. with advantage. Okay. You god of gnolls, sir. Yes. Uh, first one is 18. Nice. And also another... Oh. Actually, this one was 19. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, uh, they look at your hand as you go, hmm, to, to make them wait. And uh, all of them, like, you know, sit down. Some of them start scratching their ears with their feet and uh, one of them walks forward and points at you, points at him, and says, Do you understand me? In? In common. In common? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to uh, um, kind of uh, stand straight up. And nod my head almost as if like as if it's a dumb question. Mm. Right. I, I I I I apologize for my my uh most gnolls here can't understand me. Uh you come back and see leader? Come back and see leader? Yes. So I'm going to uh put my thumbs underneath the, the leader necklace that I have on and kind of hold it out and then pump my chest twice, kind of saying that, like, I am the leader. Mm-hmm. Okay, he looks at you, he says, ah, right, right, I I, um, well, think of him less as a leader, I guess, then, and more as a village elder, a guider of, of the gnolls. He is the longest one who's been here. He knows many things. And like me, he speaks this common tongue. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to hold my finger out and kind of motion like, um, or I'll I'll nod my head. I'll say yes, you know, like nod my head as if saying yes. I'll go, "Mm mm-hmm. And hold my finger out, kind of gesturing like one sec and start walking away with the kids. Okay, uh, roll me a animal handling check to see if the kids are going to come with you. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Oh, no. Okay. Hey, there's some humans or animals. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
We're getting canceled. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a three. <laughs> uh, the kids look at uh, the other gnolls and they say, and they go, hmm, and mimic your stay um, when you put your hands out and like. The kids do that? Yeah. Oh. As in like, but you told us to stay. Oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to pretend like I'm getting frustrated and just start mumbling just mm, 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 <laughs> and then point in the direction of the road and go mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do do what i want you to do <laughs> okay um i'm gonna roll percentage dice and just okay. just see what happens uh they start walking but they are kind of going towards camp Going towards camp. The fort. Yes. Oh, the fort. Okay. Okay, okay, good. That's at least the direction I'm trying yeah. to get them to go. But the other gnolls stay. Okay. Except for yeah. the one gnoll who is speaking common to you, he kind of follows with the the children. Okay. Um, so, how many of these kids are there? Yes. So there's five kids who were placed into the rangers who are here. Okay. Um, and actually, roll me a perception check as you're getting a closer look at these kids. Okay. Uh, not great. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, it's a it's a two. Oh, um, you know, you thought that there was something off for a second, but then you kind of realize, oh wait, never mind. These guys look just like me. Mm, okay, they're dragonborn too. They're dragonborn. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My people. <laughs> I've been looking for you forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So so if they're walking down the road, I'm going to go with them. Um, I'm going to walk them about mid-distance between the fort and the camp. So from where I am at, um, can anyone, if there are any more gnolls in the fort or as far away as we have gone from the camp, can anybody see us? From where you are standing, roll me a stealth check. Okay. If you want to not be seen, I guess. Um, definitely not by any, like, patrolling gnolls or any gnolls that are still at the fort. If, if we happen to be close enough that they're, like, if there's, like, walls that they can look out or, like, look out towers or anything like that. Like, I'm definitely trying to avoid any of those guys. Okay. 16. Okay, with a 16, you are, uh out of sight pretty much okay okay um so now uh i'm gonna walk in front of them i'm gonna hold my hands out as if to tell them to stop um and then uh i'm gonna start kind of moving them all and grouping them all in kind of a big like um huddle okay and uh as fast as i possibly can um well, actually, first of all, I'm going to pull out... I have a, a 50 feet of rope on mm. me. I'm going to pull out my 50 feet of rope, and I'm going to hand one end kind of nicely to one of the kids. Okay? Yeah. Is he going to grab it? Uh, yeah, he'll grab it. Okay, he'll grab it. Awesome. Um, so then I'm going to kind of start just casually, like, walking in a circle around these kids... <laughs> um, until I get back to the part where um, uh, the kid is holding onto the one end of the rope, and I'm just gonna, you know, kind of give him a little like happy look, and then hurry and grab it, and I'm gonna hurry and try to tie him and pull the rope as tight as I can to <laughs> to uh, tie them up, and then if, if roll me a sleight of hand, okay, check. okay, 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 fifteen, fifteen, yeah. So um, the kids all never been, never having been. I guess having experience being kidnapped recently, but um, they they don't really suspect what's going on. They're just like, oh yeah, I'll hold this rope for you. Um, th- they're like, ah, Timmy's mom forgot to bring the snacks for our huddle, but um, <laughs> they don't suspect as you tie them up. So, okay, awesome. Um, and then, uh, uh, so I'm gonna <laughs> tie it up as tight as I can. Um, pull out one of my daggers, cut the rope. How much rope do you think it would ne- I would need for? to tie them up at least with one pass. Uh, 10 feet? 10 feet? Okay. 
Um, and uh, I'm assuming somewhere nearby there's like some trees, some bushes or something. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, push them in that direction. Okay. So I'm just pushing this whole puddle of, or puddle, <laughs> uh, cuddle puddle of kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> push them all into the, like, uh, like underneath a tree, behind some bushes somewhere, kind of a little more hidden. Um, and then, uh, um, I guess, <laughs> individually cutting more pieces of rope and tying it around their mouths so they can't, like, call for help. But mm. I, as fast as I can. <laughs> oh I mean, God. I don't know if anyone, if any of them are catching on, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't let this guy <laughs> let this guy do this. But Well, they all kind of cower as you walk up to them because they saw the flick, and um, which will go down in history as the flick. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but they, uh, they pretty much are uh, the only flaw that uh like they're tied up underneath the tree gagged uh there but there is the, the trees the trees are very slight like they're very thin mm-hmm. as well as there's no leaves on them okay and the bushes don't have any leaves on them oh, okay so it's kind of they're still generally seeable but they're more obscured than they were before okay. for sure at least like anything that can help my situation right yeah. now <laughs> <laughs> um awesome so uh, so yeah, my, my goal there: tie them all up, sit them down so they can't go anywhere. I'm gagging them with the rope so that they can't cry for help in case they really are like doing this willingly. Right. I'm gonna sit there and hope that somehow I can find a way to communicate with the rest of the group. Uh, so I guess I'm I'm kind of scouring the hillside, trying to see if I can see uh, any of uh, the other guys. Okay. Uh, roll me a perception check, and while you do that, let's see. As you're standing in this this horde of um, of gnolls who have been told to stay put, what are, what are you doing? So they've like walked away at this point. Like I'm just alone with the gnolls yeah. now. Well, <laughs> I'm not doing anything in particular to stand out. That's for sure. <laughs> But I keep glancing down at Phoenix um, just to see if I'm getting any signals from her. Um, And him. Him. (laughs) And, uh, I mean, are they doing anything? Do the gnolls just, like, chill the whole time? Uh, The gnolls, yeah, generally uh, chill. A few gnolls seem to have broken out in some type of, like, wrestle. But (laughs) most of the other ones are, like, like, kneeling on the ground, looking to be in somewhat of a meditative slash prayerful stance. Um, they, they just kind of met a, met a god, so they're, they're very... Uh, some of them are shook a little bit. Well, I'm just copying the guy next to me. <laughs> and also, can I, can I see Blink at all and what's going on? If I'm uh, peeking around any corners? You could see him for a while, but then... Okay, and then uh, he disappeared. But then he disappeared. Okay, well, then I'm just straight chilling. Just, just vibing with these gnolls. Yeah. Scratching one of them on the ear, and then you're like, oh, that's weird. No, no, <laughs> trying out. to fit in. <laughs> trying to fit in. Don't be weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. If anyone was actually paying attention, they would they would see my, my paranoia shining through. And if I if I would have like um thought about that before, I mean it's, it would probably be hard for me to to, to like make out Litzy from the other yeah. gnolls anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless I, like, knew exactly which one she was, I mean, this would be pretty hard. Otherwise, I probably would have just brought her with me. Right. Know? As well as it might have been hard to communicate, hey, this gnoll, come on with me. All y'all, stay. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, wh- or what was your perception check? Eight. Eight. Uh, unfortunately, you don't really see... You see a group of Knowles, but you can't really tell which one is Litzy or if Litzy's even amongst them at this point. Uh, and the the hot cocoa station's well hidden from you. So mm, that's right. Yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah. Uh, Tess and and uh, Lakir, what what are you do, guys doing at this uh, junction in time? I'll basically just be giving him a rundown of what's going on. I'll be it's like, he's leaving with the kids, and they're walking towards us. Uh, Litzy is staying put, and now Blink has disappeared. 
Great. Uh, I'll kind of go out of it, um, and I'll poke my head out of the nook. Can I see anything? Roll me a perception check. Particularly. Is there any... Has anything from inside... Being inside the nook... Is there any indication that there's gnolls still left inside the fort? Like movement or anything like that as part of this perception? Yes. I was going to say. Natural one. Ooh. You know, two. <laughs> it seems that most of the gnolls have gone at this point. Uh, there probably isn't that many gnolls left. There's, um, And actually, in fact, uh, you think like, oh, there's not probably any gnolls left. And then... This big, uh, this tall, I guess I shouldn't say big, this tall, very slender knoll walks up in a, uh, in a l- little bath towel around his waist and he walks into the little nook and he salutes you for a second and he says, uh, boys, you here for your, uh, your massages as well? He lays down on the table and you see a necklace on him that looks similar to the one that Blink has on. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, are there actual masseuses and yeah. stuff in here? Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? What are they gnolls as well? Yeah. Yeah. So they're fine with us just being in here. Yeah. The nook's a safe haven for all creatures. Yeah. The nook is <laughs> the nook is the nat- the birth of a natural twenty mixed with a natural one. So currently, it's just this state of chaos that you don't really know what's going next but there's hot cocoa and massages well, we want to, I'm, I'm immediately just he said how's it going so he speaks common yeah oh also he has uh, the gold stripes that you have on your eyes he has on his eyes too oh Assuming, As he lays down and grabs a cup of hot cocoa and his little styrofoam I'm cup, I'm assuming with this is like all. I'm treating this as this, this is happening to you while I'm looking outside for like stuff because I don't. Yeah. Not one, I didn't see him at all. I'm gonna try to like get on the massage table next to him, like awkwardly on the one he like the way he's looking, but then I'm gonna look back at him. <laughs> so like we're both unless, unless it's like the head down kind of. Massage table. Then that. Then I'll lay under him. And look up at his face. <laughs> it is a head down massage table because I think with, that's with funnier. With the hole in the table. With the hole in the okay, table. Well, then with I the blanket will... over the table so you can't see I'll under casually, it. I'll like, casually walk up to it and then just like start laying down and like scoot just so my head is lined up, just looking up at him. Yeah, you yeah. you topple over like a whole canister of baby oil underneath oh, it, no. but it's fine. Um, they have enough. I I am so. This is. <laughs> This has gotten out of hand. I'm ready for it. <laughs> I'm, I'll be honest. I thought it was just a joke at first. And then it when was. You, I, know, I was like, think. oh, okay. This is- <laughs> it was a joke at first. And then I'm like, I said it. It's canon. We're doing it. It's canon. <laughs> so you lay underneath uh, his massage table and he looks down at you and he goes, hmm. Um, you, if you've seen my friend. Uh, they look like me. Uh, I haven't seen much of anything lately. And as make a perception check for me. Yeah, I will. Nine. Uh, since this is a very easy uh, check, the DC was five, so you're good. You notice being so close to his face, his eyes are completely white. So he kind of thought that you're like hey, have you seen my friends lately? was kind of like a, a joking jab at him as he is blind. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, I noticed we brought in a lot of shorter friends recently. Where did they come from? He, uh, like, um, he's like, well, uh, we went to that that city in the sky uh, it's above the dark, this this stupid rainbow thing that's covering our light um, but uh, we, we were paid off by some guy he was, uh, wore some blue cloak uh, his name start with an A are we sure we can trust them 
Are they gonna stay for a long time? The, oh, the, the little kids? Uh, well, uh, you won't have to worry about them for long. I, I, I'm kind of hoping that they, uh, well, today they're off on some, uh, the, some mission to be dipped. Oh, yeah, the dip. I probably am supposed to be out there, huh? Ah, it's fine. As long as you're not some covert spy coming to try and kill me or something. This is a safe space. I don't feel point, safe anymore. <laughs> I'll have, like, turned back into the space. Um, how many... So, I, I turn back. I assume I see uh, Tess just lying on the ground with a knoll lying on the table. How many other knolls slash, like, how big is the space? What... What is going on? Roll, roll me a perception check. Ten. Uh, <laughs> so again, not not a super difficult. This one was an easy check, so ten was the DC. So uh, as you look around, uh, seems like all the masseuses in here, their eyes are white. They're just all blind? They're all blind. Okay. And the room is about 40 feet in like how area. How many are there? There are five masseuses okay. and one, uh, one other knoll who's laying on the table that's uh, in front of Tess. Okay. I'll kind of go and be a little startled. I don't know. I'll, I'll go and seeing. I guess I don't know that they are all blind, but seeing that like no one's really taken a. A notice to me, I'll just kind of start tiptoeing over towards Tess. And once I get close enough, I don't know at what point in the conversation, I'll just like, I'll basically beckon him over for a sidebar, essentially. Um, I have to go for a bit, but it was good to uh, get to talk to you directly. My name's Tess. Oh, uh, hi, Tess. My name is, uh, well, you know me, I'm the king. Yeah, of course. And then I'm going to go with the uh, head off. Not sure how to ask more questions without revealing what I am. Once we're to the side, I could... What are you doing, Tess? Trying to find information. By showing yourself face to face with one of them? They don't seem to know. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the, the king is blind. That's the king. I think, I don't know. Um, he said they were sending to get dipped. I didn't really get anything useful. Dipped in the fountain? Yeah. I. Th it's some kind of ritual. It made it sound like we, like they might die, but, or or something big would happen to them. So, I didn't see any sign of blink. Litzy is still there. She seems to be a little stuck in her current situation. What are we doing here? Um, let's go rendezvous with, uh, Litzy's dad. <laughs> and, um... All right, I have an idea. You go and get Litzy and Litzy's dad. I think Blink went into the fort. I'm going to go find him. Is there any animals around? Did you leave your panda with, with Litzy's dad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a panda! <laughs> oh, no! I think we left the panda like a ways from the fort. He's probably like yeah. chilling by a rock. Okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the panda's probably you know. Outside. Yeah. But other than that, uh, the because only... I definitely wouldn't have brought the panda into this battle. I didn't think you would. I just, I but just I'm wanted glad you to brought clarify. him up so I can remember to go back for the panda. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah. So no, no panda. No in this animals area, really. Um, no animals. There's not that you can see at least outside on the fort ground. Anyways. Uh, let's check um, back in. Sorry, go for it. I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of something good I can do, but I have no idea. I'm lost. Well, I'll let you guys think about it for a second. Let's check back in with uh, Litzy. Actually, let's go with Blink first. Okay. Um, what are you so, up to, sir? So something that I need uh, to figure out right now. About how long has it been that I've been going through the fort, went and to the the dipping area well i guess i don't know that but the the the, the fountain area um and back how long do you think it's been how long does disguise self 
I, I want to know what you say first. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know. So it uh, disguised self lasts for an hour. Oh, okay. Um, I was going to say 20 minutes, so that okay. works out. Great. Okay, so that's not too bad. <laughs> I was like, no, you go first. <laughs> okay. Um, like preaching to the knolls and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I change. Yeah. Crap. Um, okay, so... So now that um, I've got all the kids tied up and everything, uh, and they're, and they're <laughs> yeah. our podcast just goes so dark. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, and uh, just to be sure that they're not gonna go anywhere, I'm just gonna break all their legs. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just Take kidding. out my club. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So so I'm gonna leave them there. I'm gonna kind of um, I'm gonna kind of like. Uh, motion to them to stay and not to move and kind of do it like intimidatingly so that they don't actually try to do anything you know so I'm still kind of rolling off that intimidation factor um, one of them turns to another one and goes and um, yeah okay that's it okay so I'm gonna go back to the fountain okay and I'm gonna find the knoll that talked to me yeah about uh, the elder. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go to him and I'm just kind of, um, kind of motion like, um, like carry on, you know, like let's go. Oh, are you ready to see the elder now? Um, I'm gonna go. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. I think he checks his wrist that doesn't have a or that has a sundial on it, but the sun's not around. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> his wrist of the sundial. Yeah, and so... Um, How inconsistent a sundial <laughs> on a wrist would be. Because like, <laughs> you're standing in the same place every time you check the time. Yeah. There's an X underneath him that's the, the yeah. watch the watch <laughs> time. The time-telling area. Yeah. Welcome to the time-telling area. <laughs> anyway. We just have a sundial here. <laughs> but if everybody has a sundial on their wrist, that's cool, too. <laughs> then they can just come and check whenever it's convenient. Technology. <laughs> Um, Yes, so he looks at his his wrist uh, with the sundial on it that has no uh, sun hitting it, but he goes, Oh, it looks like it's uh, the time for for the elder's weekly massage. Let's let's go. Okay. Cannot believe. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Um, While I'm there, do I notice any socially awkward gnolls in the area? Make a perception check. <laughs> oh, it's a natural one. <laughs> oh, we just yes. did not catch a so, break. I know. Uh, <laughs> you see a very socially awkward knoll, and he points right at you, and he points at himself, and he runs up to you, and he goes, <clears throat> and kneels on one foot, and looks up at you <laughs> like you had beckoned towards him. Ah. Um... <laughs> oh. oh no okay. <laughs> the guy that you're with who speaks common his name is Ziggy uh, Ziggy looks at the other um, Noel who approached and goes yeah, this a, this a, this a, and like the, the guy who kneeled on one foot hangs his head in shame and then turns around and walks back to the, to the Noel group okay Okay, I'm glad that happened because my only other idea was that I was going to sacrifice this guy. <laughs> yeah. I was like going to pull out my dagger and just like slit his throat over the fountain and be like, God <laughs> Yeah, but because that's all I could think of because I was like, you know, I don't know. Hopefully that wouldn't have been anybody I knew, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I'm, like, yeah. oh. I'm, like, I'm like, I learned a phrase in no. <laughs> oh god, that was that was so the spell just ends. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. All right, well so, Oh, you go. I was just gonna say, so when it was my turn, I was going to be trying to escape the area anyway, because it's been long enough. You but notice blink I was gonna approach ask, the group. Yes. I was gonna ask if I notice blink. So I see all of that go down, um, but scurry over in his direction as quickly as possible um, and try to give him my most telling look that it is me. Um, I also have Phoenix next to me, I assume, still, so hopefully that's Mm. a clue. (laughs) Okay. Uh, You approach, and Ziggy looks at you and goes, Zah, 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 zah. 
So I'm going to be like, mm-hmm. Because, <laughs> I mean, I would obviously recognize Phoenix because yeah. Um, yeah. I've seen him before. Uh, and I'd be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and just kind of uh, um, motion for this particular knoll to follow us. Oh, my mistake. Uh, come. I... I'm a little furious at his rude gesture towards me, and I shove him on our way out. Okay, roll me a strength check. <laughs> Just want to see how hard you shove. Okay. You are plus one strong. I love how there's just Ooh. absolutely Six. no plan. <laughs> I know, we're all just like... <laughs> we're like yeah. hoping a plan is going to yeah. form along the way. Yeah. yeah, so you like shoulder him as you're walking past him, and he, he's steps back and uh, looks at you uh, with a little frown um, but then like continues because obviously you were selected by by uh, the god Blink and so um, yeah so you, you guys do, uh, do you guys the follow the one who flicks yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> one who, he who flicks yeah. um, do you guys follow Ziggy to where yeah that yeah that was my phoenix mm-hmm. will <laughs> and he's gone okay so, yeah, so Ziggy leads you back to uh, the fort. Outside of the fort, you see um, that they've already started construction on a statue of a, fin- of a hand about to flick somebody. Uh, <laughs> underneath is chiseled the flick. He who flicketh. Yeah, he who flicketh can flicketh away. <laughs> anyway, but, um, yeah, so Ziggy leads you into the fort. Um so Ziggy leads you in. He uh, walks right to the hot chocolate massage nook, and um, he gestures towards the um, the elder, the king, uh, the king, the legend, and uh, <laughs> and he says, uh, well, "Sire, uh, well, I don't know if you've heard about the flick heard around the world, but uh, here is." <laughs> Here is he who flicked about two seconds ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, here is he who flicked us fast. <laughs> yeah, bad gas in a small town, right? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm assuming I see the rest of the party. Yes, because uh, I left to go inside oh, the support. Oh, so yeah. I, pretty, I pretty much just yeah. Well, see. and hopefully you didn't see me because I am trying to hide. So Roll the other ones don't check. see me. Yes, I am trying to be on the wall again with Litzy's dad and the robot, like kind of explaining. Or formulate some kind of plan with so them. out of the nook. Eighteen, yeah. With an eighteen, uh, you pass by a few guards and you like duck underneath their gaze. They don't have white eyes, so you kind of know that that was important that you were stealthy. Uh, you move along the shadows and you're able to get back to where Litzy's dad and the uh, Q sixty two is standing, or Q, I guess as you call him. Yeah. So, and and the uh, the knoll that led us to him. Still with us? Yes. Uh, Ziggy? Mm-hmm. Ziggy. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at Ziggy with kind of a... I'm going to squint my eyes and then just um, uh, kind of give him like a little motion to leave. Just like, hmm. Like telling him to go. Uh, Ziggy bows and says, of course, my liege. I uh, will leave you to, uh, to talk. I will wait outside. I... Uh, I hope my hot chocolate is complimentary today. And he points at the king, and the king doesn't notice he's pointing. (laughs) (laughs) Walks out of the... Walks out of the nook. Okay. Yeah, so Ziggy leaves the room. Uh, The uh, the three of you... Wait, Tess, you left too. So the two of you, uh, Litzy, who is still in Noel costuming, and you, who are still in Noel costuming, are disguised... Um, are left alone with the king. What do I even want? What do I even want to ask this guy right now? I didn't really expect to to be meeting this dude today. I was unprepared. <laughs> Let's see. Do you have any ideas? Like off the top of your head? Well, I wish we knew more about the fountain <laughs> to ask him. <laughs> yeah. But we don't. <laughs> the the so. Noel King looks uh, in your direction. Um, he, he's not, you know, never quite makes uh I, catches your eye glance uh, cuz he can't but um and as he's looking towards you guys he um he uh says ah so uh you're the one who flicks and uh you must be his translator 
I've heard that his mouth is, well, part of an accident. And he, like, cowers as he says part of an accident because he's obviously afraid that you're going to murder him. <laughs> so. Well, um, he definitely wants you to know that we are a friend of yours, so there's no need to um, fear him. Uh, I did, did the dipping go well? The dipping ceremony? Um, I don't think I was around for that. But I'm sure it went fabulous. I'm just gonna go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, actually, actually, I did. I did hear a lot about it, even though I haven't. Did. I was in the bathroom. I was in the bathroom the whole time, but I've, I I heard that it was extremely successful. Mm. Ah, good. Well, uh, that'll be. Uh, that'll teach the sky people to mess with us, Knowles. Those blasted sky people. Well, is there anything we can do for you today? Uh, yeah, actually, um, well, uh, if, if his greatness and he like bows and flicks his fingers like four times as a sign of respect towards you. (laughs) And, uh, he, he says, um, well, as you know, uh, the, the, uh, the dipping that has happened that has caused our, our wonderful people to rise from, from their, uh, state of disintelligence. Well, um... As you know that the uh, we have supplied uh, the sky people with some of our goop and uh, taught them how to how to reconstruct some of this goop for their own civilization, so that uh, they can create a uh, never-ending supply of this uh, food of the goop that we um, might grow to a greater consciousness, but. I have not heard from, well, that man since we, since we uh, took care of his little problem with the, uh, the, 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 one who, the ones who hunt and their, their children. Oh, yes, yes. So you would like to um, get back in touch with the man that you can't remember his name? Is that, is that right? Yeah, right. His, his, his name started with an A. Um, and he's important. He gave us lots of, lots of, uh, well, he, he's going to give us lots of purple goop. So as long as he holds up his end of the deal, we won't have to invade. Right. Absolutely. Well, that is certainly something we can help you with. So, um, and I look over to Blink to see if there's anything he can communicate, like if there's anything else he seems to be able to communicate with me for um, things he wants to do. So I'm, I'm going to, uh, um... I mean, since this guy can't see me, I'm going to get as close to uh, Litzy's ear as I can and as quietly as I can just say, um, uh, whisper, uh, what did the man um, look like? Because we know that he wears a blue cape, um, or blue cloak. His name starts with an A. But um, is there any other, like, I'm asking if there's any other features or anything that would help us. Yeah. Um, so do you have any other defining features of this man that we will be searching for? Ha. As if I could tell you. And he uh, oh, waves, crap, his, I his finger, oh. waves his hand in front of his face. <laughs> what a useless witness. He doesn't I'm, have, he yeah. can't know what the witness sounds like, can't remember his name. <laughs> like, That's sir, right. I'm terribly sorry. I just... Um, I think we'll be leaving now. Oh, no, <laughs> please, please stay. Um, I, I, You haven't even received your massage, and I haven't begun to tell you my story. Oh. Um, I'm going to whisper to Litzy again and say, uh, um, uh, tell him we have fleas and he shouldn't give us a massage, but we would love to hear his story. Um, I uh, would love to hear, we would love to hear your story, but unfortunately we are very ridden with fleas right now. As a matter of fact, you probably want to scoot back a little bit. So terribly sorry. So probably no massages today, um, but what's your story about? Ooh, fleas. He scratches his own ear. He's like, aren't you so mighty? We all have fleas. That's fine. You don't want a massage. You don't have to take a massage. They're complimentary. Have some hot cocoa. Do what you want. Um... Well, um, you know me. I'm the king. Uh, they call me King Eugene. I am great, as I was since the dawn, as you probably have known in your 
in your history books that we have created uh, about me and how I came to how I came to consciousness from what the uh, the hunters who we wiped out we used they used to call us hyena I think was the word for it and now well with the assistance of the purple goop look what you can do now I can have this conversation with the two of you well it's kind of one sided he who flicks but. Uh, I, I don't mean any disrespect, but what better way to commemorate me as the king, the first who ever walked as a hyena, as they say, than for me to live on forever. That man in the sky, he whose name starts with an A, he promised me the blood of a unicorn. And do you know what happens when you drink the blood of a unicorn? Oh, of course, everybody knows, but tell me. Oh, you live forever. You never die. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that was beautiful. I hope you get an opportunity to tell um, all the gnolls about um, your wonderful story. Um, Well, I think we better be headed off. Wait. Yes? I'm not finished. Oh, oh, yes, continue, continue. (laughs) As you can tell, I'm like itching to leave. Like, Blink, you know, he's like sitting there staring at me. I'm like, I'm like... Dancing forth on both feet, like can't wait He's to like blind. get out of here. You can literally just <laughs> <laughs> continue, continue, yeah. creep away. Except that I have terrible stealth. Don't put that idea in Lizzie's head. Um. Well, that that man. Um. He also talked about some some system that he he's been doing with the with the. Um, I don't. I don't really know how it works, but all I know is I'm very interested in it. Uh, I would never do it here. It sounds terrible, but he takes portions of people's DNA when they're sorted into some some classist system. Uh, we don't have classes here. We're awesome, but uh, they take their DNA and they they use it to to put some type of voodoo magic. In these, in these books. And these books write these people's lives. And they control the books. They control the books. Mm, that is um, very interesting information. Oh, and you know the books. I guess. This guy, this guy was telling me. I, I didn't even tell you this. the greatest part. Uh, he said that he would give me the unicorn blood in exchange if I just... There's some kids, and he just wanted me to, to take them out and, like, like you know, take care of them, kill them, whatever. But, like, there, there's some kids who, I don't know why, but their, their DNA didn't get registered in this, this system. And so their voodoo magic doesn't work on them. Mm. Their mm. books are different. Mm. Yes. Wow. Very interesting. Very interesting information that is very unfamiliar to me. Um... How much do you know about these kids? Uh, well, he didn't say much about them. Um, one of them, I think, was his kid. But uh, I, I, he didn't say much about them. I don't really... I can't tell the difference. Uh, kids all smell the same to me. So uh, we picked up these kids, and now we're kind of uh, using them as, as, a, as a collateral until he gives us the unicorn blood. Oh, yes, that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, well... Any other very interesting parts to your story? How big did those kids get after they were dipped? Oh, ma- well, like I said, I was in the bathroom at Blink. I mean, like, you know, give me Blink. an arm span. Mm-hmm. Who's this Blink? <laughs> oh, that happens to be the nickname that I have for my friend over here. Ah. Um, he blinks to communicate to me. That's how I translate for him. Well, aren't we at <laughs> quite the impasse? A man who blinks to communicate in a blind man. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Um, well, Blink seems to... I, I, I guess they must have got pretty big. His his arm span is pretty wide. So, um, well, if we're going to head to the city in the sky, we better head off right about now. So, um, Do I see... What do I see in this room? Is, it, is there one way in, one way out? Yeah. Um, it's like... It's almost like a, like, so it, it's in the corner of the fort. One way in, one way out. 
Uh, there's some masseuses who are blind who are walking around. There's a, a sweet hot cocoa station with with five different types of hot cocoa. The hazelnut I hear is amazing. Um, and then there's uh, a bunch of massage tables and baby oil. Okay. Um, is the baby oil flammable? Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you can't awesome. you can't walk out of the reason that they made the hot cocoa station in the massage table was because you, you can't walk out into the sun directly after there is no sun, but you can't walk out directly outside <laughs> because you'll burn immediately because okay. it's so flammable. Okay. Um and tell me about the uh tell me about the door, the door that leads in and out of this room. It is uh pretty much just like a tent flap question yeah so did we enter through the main entrance or did we find like an entrance out from outside of the me nook and, me and danny yeah uh actually yes you found a like a rip in in this in the in the nook uh okay. outside it's kind of a canvas outside oh okay so it's not like a wooden room, really. Uh, More like a tent. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, a tent. Kind of foils my evil plan. Oh but that's man. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, I think I'm I'm all good on on questions or anything. I. So you give me a look of approval mm-hmm. that it's time to go. Yep. Um. Okay. Well, thanks again. Um, this has been very interesting. Very, very honored to be um, the person to run this errand for you, and hopefully we will be back very soon. And then I just start walking out with Plink. Okay. So, while they're walking out, before they do that, just because slightly has to do with it, maybe their passive perception notices a little pile of three gooseberries and... Uh, good berries. Some, yeah, some of those good <laughs> berries leading outside the fort. Ah, rolling perceptions, yeah. both of you. Okay. I only have nine. <laughs> Sixteen. Um, mine... I always forget what my perception bonus is. Just nine. Oh, okay. Um, Litzy, you notice that there is a trail of good berries. Uh, Blink, you notice a trail of gooseberries. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> honk, honk, honk. <laughs> Leading in the um, completely opposite direction. So I, I, pick, I pick them up as we walk out and follow the trail. And uh, yeah, sorry, just a little back note on that. As soon as I came back into contact with them, like things were a bit crazy. They seem to be able to navigate the system pretty well. And we seem to be more of just a liability at the moment. So I'm trying to convince Q and Litzy's dad to go back to, like, that rock we were originally at where we were, like, looking at the fort. And so I'm trying to make the trail look like it leads back there. And I'm worried about my panda. Right. Uh, Well, Litzy's dad looks at you and he's like, oh, I can do that. Um, Well, Litzy gets her athletics from me. I'm quite the—I was quite the— athlete back in back in my college days but uh yeah come on let's go q and he like as he walks away i'm, I'm going with very stealthy heading back to the okay uh roll me a stealth check with a area. disadvantage the gooseberries was an attempt to uh show that we had left 14 okay yeah um so with a 14 um you're able to kind of like every single time litzy's dad takes a step and it's like really like he's got he's got like like lead feet almost like he's not stealthy at all but you you like cover it with a cough every single time that he that he takes a step and it just it works i don't know why but it just works and you're able to get out with uh, out any of the gnolls noticing but some of them like cover their faces with their with their shirts as they um hear coughing in the distance they're very they're very germ conscientious especially in the pandemic especially in the pandemic they they (laughs) They don't live in the dark yeah. over here. So, uh, Lakir, what are you up to? Um, so I would have entered into the fort, and I would just um, so I would be entering into the fort, trying to sneak around. I'd be looking for Blink, and essentially my plan would be, um, the reason why Phoenix went away is that I would have recalled him back to me, and I would be using him to like scout corners or anything like that before I start going down them um, and just attempting to 
sneak through the fort to find number one interest is blink, number two interest is anything that catches my interest. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, roll me a uh, stealth check with advantage. Okay. Opposite end of the spectrum. Ooh. Uh, 21. Nice. Okay, yeah. You move silent as uh, your your pet fox, and uh, you're able to uh, actually find uh, a trail of, uh, like, their little purple spl- splotches are left in the ground to where you can assume that Tess might have left his good berry, and you're able to find the trail that uh, Litzy and Blink were going in and you all seem to be heading in the same direction somewhat away from this this knoll camp and with that i think that's where we're going to end our session um my name is cade and i'm the host and dm of this dungeons and dragons fifth edition adventure and i'm joined here by the players to my left mason playing look here brooklyn playing litzy danny playing tess caden playing he who flicketh <laughs> Hey, don't don't uh, skip this episode quite yet. Um, we have a promo code for 10% off dice on diceenvy.com forward slash knocked. If you use promo code knocked at checkout, you will get 10% off your entire dice order. I don't know about you, but I need much more dice in my life. And that sounds like a great opportunity for me. And so I think I'm going to buy more dice too. Anyway, we hope that you remember that when life knocks you flat on your back, all you got to do is keep rolling and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Dice are nice, but so is 10% off. Mm-hmm.